You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Actually, it's the, it's the lead play in our, in our offense. Yes, a YN or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet. Get an isolation with the with the linebacker. You tell the tackle to take the defensive end if he's over him. If he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. If the YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker in, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here and a seal here. And try to run this play in the alley. What's up, guys? Welcome into Packers Total Access. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. You can find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. I'm joined alongside Tim live in Green Bay. Going to do a little NFL draft preview for you guys tonight. We may squeak in a mock draft toward the end. I know you guys were screaming for it last night, but uh, we're still gathering information. And I think it would be cool to kind of dive into three specific positions that the Packers, I think we would all consider a, a need, right? and then maybe do a uh, little mock draft at the end with all that information fresh on our mind here. But, Tim, how you doing today, Bob? Doing good, man. Happy to be here. I see the chat's already uh, talking about Cooper DeGene, but – It's so far, isn't it, man? More about his basketball skills, apparently, <laughs> than uh... – <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, hey, they love Cooper DeGene, and, and that's awesome, man. You know, every year it seems like Packer Nation kind of gets their draft crush, right? And uh, I know PFF was kind of big on him, too, going to, potentially going to the Packers. The thing that I see with Cooper DeGene, and it's early, I may end up skyrocketing him to the top of my board, right? It's still way early. The information isn't in. Um, What I seen with Cooper DeGene was inconsistency, right? And uh, uh, and which, you know, everybody's inconsistent at some point, right? But when you're talking about that number 25 pick, in my opinion, you got to, you got to go with a, you got to go with someone who's been a little more stable, a little more consistent, if you will, right? And again, I'm kind of speaking out of pocket here because I haven't done, like any kind of deep dive with Cooper DeGene. The positions we're focused on tonight is safety, offensive line, and linebacker. And immediately I know someone said, Cooper DeGene can play safety. To me, that feels like that whole, we've been here before, right? It's like we're constantly trying to fit someone into something they may or may not be, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know, man, it just, it, it makes me nervous. I get, uh, you know, PTSD, uh, you know, Demarius Randall PTSD, if you will, right? You know, it's the, that's the player that always comes to mind. I don't mean to be mean or, or hate on uh, Demarius Randall, but I just remember him talking about, yeah, he's corner, but he could play safety. And then next thing you know, they're bouncing him back and forth. And then he gets shipped out of town. And turns out he couldn't play anywhere, right? He ended up, I think, he flared out there in Cleveland and he was pretty much done. But uh, yep. how do you feel about, well, first of all, Doug in the chat says, did anyone catch the Cooper DeGene high school, high school basketball reel? Dude runs like a brother, shoots like your mother. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, to be honest with you. Oh, but, uh, how do you feel about Cooper DeGene? And I know you're no like you're just like me, Tim. You're no draft expert, right? But you know, on the surface, if someone if someone said, "Hey, Tim, how do you feel about Cooper DeGene?" What's the first thing that comes to mind? Man? Um, yeah, <laughs> I guess what Doug said, right? I mean, <laughs> I haven't seen much. Um, you know, of his film, I haven't done a deep dive, so I'm not familiar enough to really say anything, but, um, yeah, high school basketball, uh, role looked pretty good though. You know, he's a, he's a hooper. Um, uh, I don't know, <laughs> but, uh, I'm with you. If he's a corner, um, play corner. If he was listed as a safety, be a safety, you know, I right. I'm over the whole, uh, you know, if a guy's versatile, we'll know it, you know, look at, um, you know, we talked about, uh, LVN, having some versatility we knew that when we drafted him so right. unless there's something you know jumping off the tape here with uh cooper DeGene playing multiple positions i'm i'm inclined to just uh you know if you're going to take the guy play him where he's 
where he's used to playing. So, uh, but no, I can't offer any, you know, valid insight into, I haven't done my scouting homework yet. Got it. What we may do for good morning Lambo tomorrow, there will be a good morning Lambo. I'm excited about that. I've missed it, man. I, there's nothing better than rolling out of bed, grabbing a cup of, cup of diesel and coming in here talking ball with you guys. It's just a perfect way to start the day. But, um, as you guys can see, my face is a little red right now. I'm, uh, Got lit up by the wind today, so been out in the sun. I'm, I'm excited about sleeping in just a touch in the morning because, believe it or not, good morning, Lambo. I get to sleep in when I do that show. So, um, But what we may do in the morning is is kind of what we're going to do tonight with safety, offensive line, linebacker. We may do that with corner tomorrow. That would be a lot of fun. So uh, might, might kind of dive into that. But uh, SDM40 says, uh, DeGene is interesting. Um, can't wait to see the combine numbers. Uh, not buying the hype just yet. Um, I think that's a pretty uh, responsible way of looking at it, SD. And, and listen, there's nothing wrong with people. If you if you love Cooper DeGene, hey, jump all on that train, man. You know, like hey, nobody's going to judge you here. Um, everybody's got their favorite draft players. You guys know mine's Newman, right, hands down. And 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 I've, I'm sure people roll their eyes when they hear me talk about him, right? No, I got two draft crushes. All right, it's it's Tyler Newman at safety and Sam Hartman's hair. I wish I had Sam Hartman's hair. Those are the two draft crushes that I got, right? I don't know. Did you see that slow motion video, Tim, of him pulling that back at the senior bowl, man? Oh, my God. It, 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 I was just like they had to get Sam Hartman in slow motion running his fingers through his hair, man. You know, the, the ladies were going crazy. But To be young and have hair, oh, such a cool thing. <laughs> to be young and slim, man. You know, that's that's what I miss right there. But uh, anyway uh, – SDN40 says sometimes a jack of all trades is a master of none. I think there's some merit to that. I do, you know, but at the same time, it's like I think part of the reason people want Cooper DeGene to kind of, you know, to live up to the hype and the Packers potentially get him. And if he can play safety in corner or slot in safety, you know, immediately you think of like Charles Woodson, right? It was so much fun watching him bounce around and, and blitz from the nickel and and just seeing him run fire zone blitzes next thing you know, he's in the flat pick six and since he, I can still hear coach Mike screaming, go wood, go wood, go wood. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll mocked up on the sideline and everybody just losing their mind. So I get it. I get, I get to hop around that man. And uh, I know there's other people out there. They're going, man, we need a white cornerback in this league. We got, we haven't had one since Jason Seahorn. I, I think that's silly, but at the same time, I do ask people, I go, so if Cooper DeGene wasn't white, would you feel the same about him? I love asking that question because I know I know there's a good chunk of them that are they're, they'll never say it, but they're probably going, no. <laughs> <laughs> so every ever since a uh, white man can't jump came out, man, everybody's rooting for the you know the underdog there for sure. Doug in the chat says, I'd rather convert a guy to safety after a few years at corner in the league. I wouldn't force a rookie into a position new to him. And that's the thing, too. We need to do our research and see exactly – uh, how much safety he's actually played, right? So uh, I agree, though, man. It's kind of tough coming in as a rookie in general. And yeah. then to have someone just have to change positions, especially if they've played it, you know, their entire life, that can be tricky, right? So uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Greg in Green Bay, good to see you in here, buddy. He says, Stokes, cornerback to safety, question mark. I don't no. feel like Stokes – yeah, <laughs> I agree with Tim. I don't believe like Sto – I don't believe Stokes is. Stokes is that man cover corner. That's what he was at Georgia, Right. And uh, just seeing him try to play the ball on the sideline, it's not his strength playing the ball. So at the safety position, you want that guy that's quick twitch, good tackler, and uh, can go get the ball, right? And I just yep. don't feel like Stokes is that guy. I could be wrong, but I don't feel like he's – at least he hasn't shown it up to this point in his career. So um, I don't know. See, Tim, you said no too, right, to that question? Oh, yeah. I, I'd argue more about sticking him in the slot than – moving them back to safety, honestly. But, um, right. you know, I want to give them a shot, though. You know, let's see. Right. You may have a chance in this new scheme here to really, uh, you know, get right, so to speak, after dealing with these injuries and, you know, have an inconsistent play on the field because you're getting inconsistent reps. You know, your weeks and months go by and you don't play, and then all of a sudden you play a couple of games, you have setbacks. It's hard to get, you know, literally your legs under you. So um, I'd be interested to see how he looks. Um, you know, in Jeff Halfley's system, but I'm I'm with you. I don't I don't see him going to safety. Yeah, I don't either, man. Um, let's see here. Master Assassin in the chat said, I bet one of Newbin or Kenshin's happens at 41. I think there's a good possibility, Assassin. I really do. Um, and we're gonna talk about that here in just a second. Uh United Bates in the house, good to see you, buddy. He said, I'd like to see us nab Quinion Mitchell and one of either Newbin or Kenshin's. If you're if you somehow, some way 
pull off Quinn Young Mitchell and one of Newbin or Kenshin's. Hey, call it a wrap. Trade all the other picks. I'm good with it. We're good to go. Let's just let's just back out. Careful um, what you wish for. Goody might do it. He yeah. might trade them. You never know. Um, the problem with that base is what I'm hearing is Quinion Mitchell is now inside the top 20, and some people are even throwing around the idea that he could be top 15 or top 10. I think that's a stretch, but it just kind of shows you that senior bowl really does carry some merit with it, right? So um, I don't see him being there at 25. But if he drops to 21, 22, maybe trade up and take him, right? How cool would it be to see someone like Quinion Mitchell opposite Jair Alexander? My gosh. Yeah, yeah. And then you don't have to worry about Stokes. You just march those two guys out there. You got, you know, some of the best number three and number four corners in the league, I would argue. If you if you bring back Valentine, you'd have Stokes hopefully healthy by then. Uh, you bring Keyshawn Nixon back for return uh, reasons, but him still kind of bouncing around the slot. I could see that being – Pretty solid. How about taking two safeties? How about taking Kinchins and Newbin and then somehow working one of them into the slot occasionally and see if they could play that? You know, no argument for me there. That would um, be kind of exciting too, right? So it's all going to come down to what Halfley wants to do, right? And and what's his style? You know, what is he is he more conservative in that regard, or is he going to just kind of plug and play people where he thinks they make fit best? Uh, Deadfish speaking of that says Leroy Butler was drafted as a cornerback. I didn't know that, Deadfish. That's good stuff, man. Um that and, and again, you think, okay, well, he did it, and then you all us old farts, we've got to step back and go, how long ago was that? Yep. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Whole different ball game, too, right? Back then. So, uh, but Leroy, man, what a what a great player. Uh Greg Rice in the chat said, How fast is Nubin? Did I hear he was clocked at 24 mile in there? I hope you heard of that. Um, guys, do a little research, see if we can find that number. If he clocked in at 24 mile in there. I'm so, but we're again we're we're still gonna walk through the exercise tonight. So uh let's see here. Uh what else we got real quick. I'm with you, Clayton. We gotta take we gotta take multiple swings at these positions because there's yeah. no guarantee we're gonna hit on any of them. Mm-hmm. You know, you wanna you wanna give yourself the best chance to basically do what Goody did with that wide receiver room <laughs> like Absolutely. the last draft. You know, we'd like to do that with our our corners and safeties here. So I think it's, you know, the more the merrier. I'm not really hung up on, you know, the specifics. That's why I'm looking forward to doing these breakdowns and really, you know, doing the exercise and and um, getting to see what, you know, each of these players has to offer. Because at the end of the day, none of them are NFL proven. And there's no no guarantee, regardless of where you're drafted, that you're going to you're going to find success in your first year in the league. So I think the more swings we take, the better chance we have here. Definitely. Uh, Doug in the chat says Charles Woodson, too, even arrived in Green Bay as a corner, ended up being uh, the best safety I ever saw. Yeah, it was kind of on the backside of his career. He, he really uh, they put him in the safety spot and played really well, especially in those base defenses, man. That's where you can really take advantage of someone like that. Right. And uh, and how well they're going to play. So let's do this. Then. Let's kind of dive into the information we got tonight. We got a lot to go through. We're going to rattle this off real quick and kind of give you guys an idea of where we stand or where I stand, I should say. I want to get Tim's opinion as well. I'm going to slide this other stuff down to tomorrow. We had some key statistics I was going to show you guys and gals, but we'll do that tomorrow. First of all, let's look at the safety position. Tyler Newbin and Cam Kinchins, all right? So this is the PFF draft board, all right? So this is their vertical board. Now, you'll see they've got Tyler Newbin ranked 50th. They've got Cameron Kinchins ranked 54th. they got Kalen Bullock rated or ranked, I should say, 65th, okay? So what I want you to key in on is the right side of the screen here. They've got their PFF grades listed. So look at Tyler Newbin's PFF grade this year, 89.2. That was 10th best in the entire uh, NCAA, all right? Out of 852 safeties, he was 10th at 89.2, all right? Now, last year we learned our lessons, Tim, and I've incorporated into my board this year when I was talking about Jaden Reed snuck up on me. And really, the all the signs for Jaden Reed lied in the the year before. Okay, he he was just phenomenal the year before. So we're now starting to go back and look at the year before as we're building the draft board. So let's look at Tyler Newbin's PFF grades real quick. Starting in 2021, 72.6, 2022, 76.4, 2023, 89.2. So you see just a a steady incline, right? So of performance. So Tyler Newbin last year, 89.2. Let's jump down to Cameron Kinchins, 54th overall ranked prospects according to according to PFF. All right. In 2021, 68.8. 2022, 
2022, 90.0. But 2023, back down to 67.8. So when you look at that, if you were to look at that, if you were trading stock here and you'd look at that, if you look at those two stocks right there, you'd be going, okay, this guy right here up top, Tyler Newman, looks like he's going to be a steady climber, man. This dude is just going to be steady, Eddie, gaining momentum, going to keep momentum, hold on yards. When you look at Cam Kitchens, it's inconsistent. He had one really good year, really good year. I mean, elite year, right? But what happened the other two years? That's the question, right? And and I know he had a little bit of injury concerns last year, too, if I remember correctly. I know he got knocked out in one game, took a big hit. That was a scary moment. Not that you would hold that against a prospect. I'm just saying, like, maybe that played into his grade dipping a bit. It could. When you go to Kalen Bullock, Kalen Bullock's is 68.4, 82.5, 71.5. So very much so like Cameron Kitchens, where he's kind of, you know, low, you know, pretty high, and then back down to low again. What's crazy is Kalen Bullock had a higher PFF grade this year than Cam Kitchens did. So if you were to look at those three, obviously, you you know, this is what I'm looking at when I say I really like Tyler Newman over Cam Kitchens. Forget the PFF grades. Forget the names for a second. Which safety would you rather have? The one who's six foot two oh five or the one that's six foot two two ten? Right. So now are you sacrificing some athleticism? Could be the case. Sure didn't affect him on the field, right? So uh just kind of take that in consideration. Now we all know, we always say on this show, PFF isn't everything. I think it's a very valuable tool. I don't think it should be taken as the gospel. I think it's something that you can compare to other statistics. So In my opinion, one of the most important statistics when it comes to a safety and even a linebacker to that certain extent where where with the game going towards the pass more in the NFL is passer rating when targeted. So let's look at passer rating when targeted. I sorted everything out here and tried to get these two guys in the mix as much as I could as far as snaps and just filtering it down to those two safeties being Tyler Newbin and Cam Kitchens. We sorted by passer rating against. Tyler Newbins was 34.4 when targeted. What that basically means is that was the quarterback's passer rating when he targeted Tyler Newbins' guy, his cover responsibility. Look where Cam Kitchens is, Tim. 139.2. Wow. That is bad. That is really bad. And that's not a, okay, well, he the scheme didn't allow him to be a player. That is when he was targeted. That's a big red flag to me, man. And again, we might be splitting hairs here, but I think it's important. Mm -hmm. Especially if we're talking about a scenario where he might be the only safety back there. Exactly. (laughs) You you know, we're talking about going single high safety a lot. I mean, you got to have a dog back there, man. You can't be getting lit up. And here's the thing, guys. This was college football. This was college football. Like, if you were to look at, Darnell Savage's passer rating when targeted, we looked it up and it was like 60 or 70, right? It was something mm-hmm. like it wasn't as good as Tyler Newbin, but of course he's playing in the NFL, he being Darnell Savage. Cameron Kinchin's, his passer rating when targeted was like horrible at the yep. college level compared to Darnell Savage's, who we all know we're not real big on, right? And he had a really good year this year, you know, as far as by his standards. So and we've been comparing Newbin and Kinchins, you know, in previous, you know, pods. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we always come back to Jake Shavink's point about Cam Kinchins being a better scheme fit, probably. Um, But, you know, the more we break this down and we look at the numbers and we look at, you know, like what we have on the screen right here, uh, passer rating when targeted, and, and you see Newbin's numbers here, and then you also couple that with the fact that, yeah, Newbin's a little taller, a little, little bigger. Um, you know, the the argument is there now for your guy. I mean, I'm yeah. I was a big Cam Kinchins guy, and now I'm leaning more towards if we got to take one of these, you know, yeah. I'd go after Newbin if possible. But you know, if 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 he's even on the board when we pick, I do you do you really think Goody goes safety at at pick twenty five and takes I don't know. takes Newbin? Probably I mean, not. Was did he take Savage? Am I thinking right, or was that before him? I can't remember. If anybody knows that in the chat, throw it up there for us. When was Savage remember. drafted? Twenty seventeen. I can't remember, man. I should know that, but these years, man, they're blurring together. On I know. <laughs> Getting old, <laughs> dog. Getting old. <laughs> yeah. So Peter Stone in the chat said, "I'm seeing more and more mock drafts where Newbin 
is gone before 41. That doesn't surprise me at all when you kind of look at these numbers. I don't yep. think there's one mock draft I've looked at where Kinchins is above Newbin as far as uh, big boards, I should say. 33rd team has Newbin higher. PFF has Newbin higher. Um, but, again, it's the people I respect, like Jake Shavink and others, that have Kinchins over him. And that's where I'm like, I'm going to default to those guys because – I trust their opinion over my own, right? So um, that's just kind of how I see that. So uh, something else to mention here, and I love this. Let's play devil's advocate for a second. Uh, Doug said, Clayton, is it possible Newbin's PFF is artificially high playing in the Big Ten West against passing juggernauts like Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, and Illinois? I think that's a very good point, Doug. It is, and that's something you got to take into consideration, right? But at the same time, who who was uh you know uh, who was Kenshin's playing against right who's who's the powerhouse aren't they in the ACC am I thinking right like you had FSU of course with Jordan Travis right who else is in the ACC that's really good right like I, I, and I, I'm probably not the person to to ask that question and definitely not the one to answer it um but yeah when when stuff like that comes up though Doug I can't help my boring fandom I can't help but just default to you can only play the people across from you like. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. You know, they said the same thing about Tucker Craft, right? Well, he played at a small school. Look at what he's done. They said the same thing about Josh Allen, right? And look at what Josh Allen's done. Yeah. So um, I tr- I don't put near as much stock into who did they play against as most people, but that's why I rely on other people for the information too, because I'm yeah. I'm very I'm a pushover like that for sure. <laughs> um, United Bates says it was 2019 first round pick 21, so that would have been good. So, so so there is precedent. For this there, there first is. round, twenty first pick, he took a safety, so it's not unheard of. Yeah, thank you, you Bates. Know. We appreciate you looking that up. Good buddy. work, yeah. Thanks, Bates. Um, all right, so let's do that. We hit safety. So for me, I would label them Newbin one, Kinchins two. All right, that's how I would name. I would label those. Now let's move on to offensive line. We're going to rattle through a bunch of information here. So what I did was first I went centers, guards, then tackles. Okay, and centers you got Jackson Powers Johnson at twenty two. You've got Zach Frazier from West Virginia at 41. You've got Cedric Von Prahn at 114 out of Georgia. Now let's look at the PFF grades. Jackson Powers Johnson, 70.1, 84.3, 84.3. So he he literally went to 84.1 fourth highest graded center to 84.3, the first overall graded center last year. Just an absolute stud at center, according to PFF. 6'3, 320, good size, right? Zach Frazier. 77.5, 80.8, 74.5. Okay, so a little more inconsistent, right? Had kind of a down year. But you got to keep in mind what we did with Jaden Reed reaching back one year. Uh, you feel like Goody's really putting some emphasis on the year before because the 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 most recent year is going to cause your draft stock to drop a bit. You might get a real good steal. With him trading back twice and still nabbing Jaden Reed, you can see what he saw. Uh, in in Jaden Reed once you went back and looked at the the previous year's tape, right? Uh, Cedric Von Prahn, 70.0, 69.0, 77.9. So, Tim, out of these right here, out of these three, I'm picking Jackson Powers Johnson as the best center here. Do you disagree with that? Do you have any any kind of uh, rebuttal there or anything like that? No, I think that's pretty, pretty clear, clearly evident. Um, however, I do think, you know, depending on how our board, you know, shapes up here, I mean – we could probably do a lot worse than in either one of these three. Um, I agree. But uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, yeah, for sure, looks to be the best best bet. All right, so let's move on to guards. At guards in the number 53 spot, we got Christian Haynes out of UConn. All right, at number 91, you've got Christian Mahogany. Um, and then at 98, you've got Cooper Beebe out of uh, – I'm sorry, Christian Mahogany was out of BC. And then at number 98, you've got Cooper Beebe um, out of Kansas State. So when you look at the PFF grades – Drop that banner down real quick so I can get that last one there. Starting with Christian Haynes, you go 72.0, 83.9, 80.2. So pretty solid. Didn't take a huge step back uh, this this year. And the year before, he played really well. You see he stepped out of the 70s 
and stabilized himself there in the 80s. Pretty solid scores, right? You go to Christian Mahogany in 2021, 82.7. 2022, there's no grade, no snaps. I'm assuming he was hurt all year. And then in 2023, 74.9. So you could see maybe the injury set him back there. You got to kind of take that into consideration if that's why he, I'm sure that's why he missed significant time and why there's not a grade there. Now, when you move on to Cooper Beebe, Cooper Beebe, 85.4, 80.5, 83.9. That's some solid grades, Tim. 6'4, 335. He's a big boy, too. Big old boy. So can you play center? Right <laughs> yeah, exactly. probably could. Not, <laughs> not able to. You never know. Just solid right there, too. So um, you got out of those out of that group, I've got Christian Haynes and Cooper BB wrote down. I'm not going to write down Christian Mahogany. What we're trying to do here, guys, is get uh, four offensive linemen that we really like here. And then we're going to go into the mock draft with this information fresh on our mind. OK, you're, you're kind of it's a it's a bit of a um, what am I trying to say? Your spoiler alert. But that was the point of the exercise. I love doing this every year around draft time. So let's move on to tackles. Look at Joe Alt, that damn Golden Domer, number five on the list, 78.8, 91.4, 90.7. That dude's going to be a top five pick. Tim. Another no beast, 6'8", 322. Good Bro, Lord. Turn on the tape, Tim. I, it, it, when you lay down, when you lay your sweet head on that pillow tonight, my friend, put on Joe Alt's tape. Just go Joe Alt highlights and watch that, dude. Just look how big he is, a massive human being. Extremely intelligent. Young, he come out, you know, after his junior year. Um, I know everything about Joe Alt. He was the leader of that that Notre Dame team. He's just, yeah, he's amazing. I'm going to keep him off this list, though, because I don't think anybody or their grandmother thinks that he's going to be available at 25. But I just wanted to put him up there because that dude is just, oh, my gosh. So uh, in the number nine spot, you've got Fashanu, okay, um, out of uh, Penn State. His PFF grade, 69.1, 71.0, 78.8. People are going, why is he so high? Because tackle is that important, my friends. <laughs> That's okay. why. As you could tell they, they, they're they looking for a reason to get these guys in the top ten because it's just it's that important of a position. It's a premier position. But Fuaga is the one that I feel like people are sleeping on, Tim, out of Oregon State. He's the number 12 ranked prospect, okay, six foot six, 334. Here's his PFF grades. 85.6, 80.4, 88.2. I mean, that's just – some would say they would take his grades. If you looked at his profile and then looked at Joe Alt's profile, but you removed the two names, I, I would – I feel comfortable saying a good chunk of people will go, give me the guy who's been in the 80s the entire time, right? Like, he's shown some serious consistency since 2021, three years in a row. So just really good numbers there. So – um, now, let's do this. Let's go to uh, – well, first of all, Fuaga, right? Um, I think we're, we want to ride him down again. Joe Alt doesn't make the cut. I'm going to leave Fashanu off. Now, just like we did with passer rating when targeted, right? You know, PFF isn't everything. What's a good analytic, a good statistic, whatever you want to call it, for an offensive lineman and go, okay, how can we cross-reference these? How can we cross-check it? Just to make sure PFF isn't showing favoritism towards one guy and, and it's unwarranted, Right. Let's go to SIS and go to blown block percentage, okay? I want you to key in on the center of this graphic. It says all plays. You notice you got pass blocking and run blocking off to the right. Focus on all plays and down to the right a little bit, you'll see BB percentage. That is blown block percentage, okay? So we got it sorted lowest to highest, obviously. And look who is at the top of the freaking list. All these guys, all four of these guys, all these offensive linemen we just talked about, they're all sorted to be on this list of these final four here, okay? That's Powers Johnson at center, Christian Haynes, and BB at guard, and Fuaga at tackle. And we added their teams in, and then we we reduced the amount of snaps or we filtered out some of the garbage snaps, some of the, the guys that had, you know, 10 snaps, 15 snaps, whatever, and we set a minimum there. Blown block percentage, Jackson Powers Johnson is number one out of all of these guys, Tim, at – Literally 0.6% blown block percentage amongst all plays. Just absolutely phenomenal. He only blew 0.4% of his pass blocks and 0.9% of his run blocks. Just solid. Now, if you go down to number three, look who's next. Christian Haynes out of UConn. Blown block percentage, 0.9%. He only blew 0.7% of his pass blocks 
and at run blocking, uh, 1.1% is what it's showing here. And sometimes the numbers can get a little bit funky. We're not going to get too caught up in it. Next is Cooper Beebe at Kansas State. 1.1% blown block percentage. 0.7% blown block in pass blocking. And then 1.5% blown block in run blocking. Okay. And then you got to go down to the number nine spot here out of Oregon State, Fuaga. Of course, you got to keep in mind, He's out there on the edge, guys. He's hanging on for dear life, right? That's a whole lot different than trying to pass block on the interior. You're usually isolated against a phenomenal edge defender, and uh, I, I think no one would disagree that, you know, hey, it's it's harder to block out there on an island with someone in a wide nine or a seven tech as opposed to getting some help from the center occasionally and facing someone in a three to four tech, right? So, uh, But, again, Buaga comes in at the nine spot here, 1.3% blown block percentage. So if you took all that into consideration, PFF grades, Jackson Powers Johnson, right, and how he lined up there at 70, 84, 84, and then you went to the guards and said Christian Haynes, 72, 83, 80, and then Connor Beebe, or I'm sorry, Cooper Beebe, 85, 80, 83, and then at tackles, you get Fuaga. We're going to cross Fashanu off the list because it's just a, a little bit too low for us there, especially that high in the draft, 85, 80, and 88. And then with the blown block percentages, what I'm coming up with, Tim, is number one on the list of all these offensive linemen. And the reason I put them all together is because I think we would all agree I could see them taking a tackle. But we also yeah. know we could do a lot better at center. And we darn sure know we need a right guard unless we're just ready to roll forward with Sean Ryan. Right. So um, what I've got here, Tim, is Powers Johnson first, Christian Haynes second, Cooper Beebe third, and Fuaga fourth. Um, anything you want to add there? Do you disagree with anything? What do you think about those numbers? I can pull up any of the graphics. Oh, I'm, I'm with you. I'm in agreement on that. Um, you know, the blown block percentage, I mean, anything, you know, around 1% or below is What else good. could you ask for? Right? Yeah, what else can you ask for? I mean, and then you look at Powers Johnson, it's like, wow. I mean, you're as close to perfection as you can really get. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we're, you don't want to get to the point where you're splitting hairs too much. I mean, but you do want to be at the, you know, the higher end of the spectrum when it comes to that. Cause you know, and again, this is blown black percentage in the NCAA, not the national football league. So exactly. you, you want to, you want a guy with uh, low numbers there. So when he does make the transition, even if you see a little bit of dip, um, it's just him, you know, catching up to the NFL speed and, you know, not a big deal, but if you got a guy that's, you know, 2%, 3%, blown block percentage in NCAA. I don't see how it's going to improve going up against the dogs in the NFL. So uh, I'm yeah. with you on this for sure. Good deal. So what we're doing, guys, if you haven't caught on, we're building mini draft boards, mini draft boards on paper right now. Safety mini draft board, offensive line mini draft board. We got them ranked now. Now let's move on to linebacker. I think we would all agree. I could see the Packers taking a linebacker if the right, the right uh, situation you know, showed itself in this draft. So let's start at the top here. This is the PFF draft board. Again, we're doing this because we can get a really good bird's eye view of the PFF grades. Uh, ranked 62nd overall in the draft is your first linebacker coming in on the board, Edgerin Cooper out of Texas A&M. His grades, 64.1, 66.1, 90 .8. Tim, he really stepped out this year, dude. 6'3", 230. That guy – if that is the new norm for him, and again, it's going to take a huge step back in the NFL, but still it's going to mean that he's way, way better than the other linebackers coming in the draft too if these grades yeah. hold true, right? So, I mean, those look, like three, those look like two different players. It really does. <laughs> There's right there, three, 390th, 383rd, and then all the way down to second. Yeah. I mean, was he, was he coming off injury? I have no idea. I mean, when you look at the snap count, 339. 621, yeah. 609. So I don't think so, man. Maybe I think not. he's probably healthy. Um, wow. But that, that inconsistency scares you, right? It's like that's a big jump. Is yep. he, he going to take a step back? And is he going to be closer to that 66 range at the college level? Or is he, you know, did he did, did something click? That's the gamble of the draft, right? So right. that's kind of how he, Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you see the opposite with uh, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. right there underneath. 71, right. 86, 85. You see the growth, but then you see kind of – Kind of where he's at, yeah. Yeah, so at the 64 spot, like you said, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. out of Clemson, six foot 230. Now that matters. Edgerin Cooper, 6'3", 230. That's that prototypical build, right? Jeremiah Trotter Jr., if he was six foot three, I, I could see this guy 
being in the top 50, probably the top 40 on the, on the board, right? It's just that being that short, there's been great linebackers that were short like that. When I say short, you know, six foot tall. Um, but it is, it is something that scouts pay attention to, so you got to keep that in mind. Me personally, I don't care about, you know, two or three inches of height. That's just me personally. Like what I was saying with Newbin is if you were to remove the names and look at the build, just like you would remove the names here, remove the grades, yeah, you would definitely go with Edron Cooper, right, because he's a bigger guy. Why would you not? If you said they're both the same player, they're going to play at the same level, yes, you would take the uh, the extra height there, obviously. But with Jeremiah Trotter Jr., his grades, like you said, Tim, 71.4, 86.9, 85.6. So, um, you know, you go from 15th in 2022 to, to 20th in 2023, that looks like that's pretty well stabilized there, man. That's the consistency you're looking for. That's why I'm so high on Jeremiah Trotter Jr. for sure. In the number 67 spot for Michigan, you got Junior Colson, 6'3", 247. He's got seven, almost 20 pounds heavier than Edger and Cooper at the same height. That dude is a man bear. I mean, that that's going to be a hoss in the middle right there. Uh, you're talking about a run thumper. I, I, I can only imagine. I mean, he's. I bet he has – I bet he plays a run really, really well carrying that kind of weight, especially if you're going to be in there filling the A and the B gaps, but if you're mugging or whatever, run blitzing. So 2021, 48.5, and it wasn't a small sample size, 521 snaps. Um, 2022, 75.5, 2023, 81.7. So you see that huge jump from year, year one to year two, and then another significant jump from year two to year three. So, and and all these guys are juniors too. So they're coming out one year before they actually had to. So uh, somewhat young, I guess you could say. Um, what do you think about those linebackers on the surface there, Tim? Before we move on to another crucial stat that I think is important. Yeah, I mean, Colson looks like a dog. Um, and really another good. guy you you see, um, you know, with improvement, and then a kind of you know steady improvement. I wonder if it was him putting on the weight. You know, maybe he started bulking up in 21, you know, to, to get himself in this position, you know, as he finished his collegiate career out, knowing he's going to be draft eligible. Um, be, yeah. and, you, and you see the improvement, him getting used to that, that you know, bigger body um, and being able to move. So, you know, those things are important. But, yeah, 81.7 um, PFF grade, that's pretty good, you know. And like you said, decent snap totals, too. So you're getting a good sample. Um yeah, I mean, I'm with you, man. I, Trotter being a little um, – or Jeremiah Trotter Jr. being a little uh, short is not – that's not a deal breaker for me at all. Yeah. Um, I, I I'm kind of high on on him for sure. Definitely. Peter Stone in the chat said, hey, Clayton and Tim, can we see Cedric Gray compared to the other linebackers? These are screen grabs here, Peter, so I can't do that like in real time while we're doing this exercise. If I can remember at the end and we have time, I'll pull up Cedric Gray and kind of see where he ranks out because I'd like to see that too. I know I've heard his name mentioned several times as well. So uh, we'll see uh, We'll see what we got there if we have time here at the end, buddy. Um, Greg Rice says Ray Lewis, six foot one, and he was kind of good. Very good point, man. Just <laughs> and, and again, different era, right? Different era. But at the same time, if Ray Lewis is getting drafted over again today – he he's going to be the top linebacker taken. There's no doubt about that. Hey, we get and Zay McDuffie. What is he listed at? You know, like he's not the he's the not tall, that big. Is he's he? not yeah, the tallest know. dude in the world, but he's a hell of a linebacker. That was the thing that was appealing about both Quay and Devondre Campbell, if I remember correctly. Though they're really tall, right? Is it Devondre Campbell like six three or six four or something like yeah. that? Yeah, yep. If I remember correctly. So, and again. How did he play last year, right? You gotta you gotta compare apples to apples. Wasn't a, wasn't a very good campaign, right? Hopefully it was just the injuries and he rebounds this year. But uh, yep. all right, so those are the PFF grades on the surface for me personally. You guys know Jeremiah Trotter Jr. You got the consistency. I would actually pick Junior Colson over Edron Cooper if it were me. And you can see there's only five five draft spots in between these three guys, right? So it's not yep. like. There's a huge Trump, you know, drop off there. I think that uh, these are graded out pretty fairly there, and you can see you can make a case for any of either of these three guys to uh, to get drafted for sure. So, all right, let's do this. What's another important stat we talk about, Tim? We pointed out Devondre Campbell's passer rating when targeted this year was 155. Absolutely, <laughs> right? About threw up on my keyboard, um, and and he wasn't the only one either. Like it was it was pretty bad across the board. So let's go to passer rating when targeted. Okay. So, again, this is the QB passer rating 
when they target a receiver or tight end that these linebackers are covering or they're the closest defender to them, to the best of my knowledge, is kind of their responsibility, right? The first one, first of all, the three, the list of three is Edron Cooper, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., and Junior Colson. Of those three, the very first one, Junior Colson at 22.3. Like that is phenomenal, man. Absolutely phenomenal. So He's the highest graded one there. You got to go down to the number seven spot with Jeremiah Trotter Jr. would be next at 66.3. Still pretty good. Pretty darn good at the linebacker position, right? And then you got to go down to the eighth spot to Edrin Cooper at 66.7. Okay, so pretty, pretty close there between those two. Um, I think if you take all things into consideration and you look at Junior Colson and say, okay, man, his passer rating uh, against is is really is significantly better than the others. You look at the PFF grades, pretty solid, but Jeremiah Trotter Jr. was so much better against the run. That's another reason why his PFF grade is so high, and he did it two straight years in a row. For me, Tim, I would rank these linebackers, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., number one, Junior Colson, number two, Edron Cooper, number three. Would you rather have Colson, number one, or Jeremiah Trotter, number one? I think no, I'm with you with Trotter. I like Trotter. And I'm definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely taking Colson over Cooper. Yeah. Me too, man. It's just, and again, we're kind of cross-checking. PFF isn't everything. Passer rating with target isn't everything. But when you see the commonalities across the board, it's like, okay, the, the picture becomes a lot clearer, right? So uh, just wanted to point that stuff out. Now let's do this, man. Um, let me just keep an eye on the chat for me. Okay, you marked a few. Here we go. All right, good stuff, man. God, I love the guys. I swear. You guys make this show. I just need to shut up and let the listeners run it. Uh, United Bates says McDuffie, six foot one, two twenty seven. There yep. you go with that. So he was a little shorter in stature, right? They, they measured Zay McDuffie with with, uh, with his cleats on for sure. <laughs> exactly for sure. Yeah, there you go. Devondre Campbell, six foot four, two thirty two. Get that prototypical Oof. size. And then Quay Walker, you could tell Goody's got a top, six foot four, two. 41, yeah. another one, man. And it helps in pass coverage. It really does, right? You know, having that that extra height. There's no two ways about it. So with that being said, we just ran the numbers, right? We ran all the all the information down. Tim, you want how about we do us a mock draft? What do you think, man? Um, I think that sounds like fun, Clayton. Right, let's do it. Let's it won't it. be the last one. It, it certainly isn't the first. So no, uh, he, let's do it. And rather than take up like a whole show doing a mock draft, what I like to do is these rapid fires. Let's cover the news of the day. Let's hit on some key analytics, key statistics, talk draft board. Bang, let's hit us a draft. Let's hit us a mock draft. So, guys, we're going to do this one. It's going to be hard. Uh, Tim, if you could kind of keep an eye on the chat, I'm probably going to make the definitive picks here. Um, you and I will. But I would like some input if you see some input along the way. But let's go ahead and crank this thing up. Keep in yeah, mind, guys. Here we go. <laughs> we're looking for safety, offensive line, and linebacker. Let's see how this draft board falls. And we're using the NFL Mock Draft Database. You can find it, NFLMockDraftDatabase.com. Let's crank this puppy up. <laughs> I had to put that up there. I'm sorry. Paul Robertson said, AFAM, 5'9", 143. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. Oh, man. All right, Tim, do we want to entertain any kind of trades in this? No, not tonight. No, uh, no, no. Tim, not Tim, yet, it's right? been a long day. No trades. No, no trades. My brain right. can't function at that level and, right and now. And here's the thing. We don't have to take one of these three positions. We just wanted to share that information with the listeners on the pod, share that information visually with you guys here on YouTube. And if it comes up, hey, we got to make a choice between these, we got many draft boards created for these positions. All right, so with the number 25th pick, here are our options, Tim. Defensive line, Jerzon Newton. Uh, wide receiver, Keon Coleman. Defensive lineman, Byron Murphy. Quarterback, J.J. McCarthy. Quarterback, Bo Nix. Interior offensive line, Graham Barton. Um, edge defender, Braylon Trice. Interior offensive lineman, Jackson Powers Johnson. And I got to be honest with you, dude. If I could, I would trade back right now. That's exactly what I'm feeling. And if we're feeling like that right now, don't think for a second that Goody wouldn't be feeling like that. Exactly. Right? Like that. I mean, this is a that's a real possibility at 25 that Goody trades back. But uh let's just kind of sort it by safety real quick if it'll let me here. So you see Cameron Kinchins at 40, Tyler Newbin at 48, according to the mock draft database. So they've got Kinchins higher than Newbin. You guys know on our mini draft board, we've got Newbin higher. So I feel good not taking a safety right here, Tim. Um, now who's next? Let's go to offensive line real quick. Let's go interior offensive line, Graham Barton. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson is next. Um, let's see if anyone else we had on our list. There's Cooper Beebe at 62. I like where he's sitting. Loving that. 
Um, let's see uh, who else did we have? Christian Haynes. Where's Christian Haynes at? 86, Tim. So just to remind you, Tim, our mini draft board here for offensive line is Powers Johnson 1, Christian Haynes 2, BB 3, Fuaga 4. Okay, so just keep that in mind. And, and you know, really the, the value pick here for me as we look forward to pick 41, 58, 88, 91 is if we can get Christian Haynes at 88 somehow, some way. I feel good about taking him at 58, but if we could get him at 88, my gosh, man, that would be awesome. Um, now let's look at linebacker real quick just to kind of see where these guys are sitting. All right, there's Peyton Wilson um, at in the number 95 spot. He's the first one. you got Tommy Eichenberg. None of these guys are on our list, right? Yeah. Uh, you've got uh, uh, Leah, Leah Fa. I can't I can never say his name out of Notre Dame. There's a couple of different Notre Dame backers that are, that are ranked pretty high, though. Uh, right now so let's see what else we got here you got Jalen Ford linebacker from Texas you have got uh, linebacker Tyron Hopper um, from Missouri you've got Nathaniel Watson so it looks like all of our guys are gone ain't they yeah. there no, well, Junior Colson oh here we go we were, we were down too far my bad here we are okay. yeah Edrin Cooper is still available. They got him in the 56 spot. I was sitting there going, damn, all those guys went. <laughs> Jeremiah Trotter Jr. at 65, still there. Junior Colson. Again, just a quick recap. We had Jeremiah Trotter Jr. first, Junior Colson second, and Edgerin Cooper third. So you think Trotter will still be on the board at 41? I, I think he has to be, man. I don't yeah. think I think there's a good chance he's there at 58. But here's what's crazy. If you really want to stretch it out. I think there's an even better chance that Junior Colson is there at uh at 88 too, like like at 58 and 88. Like you can you can definitely get one of those two, right? Jeremiah Trotter Jr. or Junior yeah. Colson at 58. There's no doubt so, in my mind. So if we're not gonna go safety with the 25th pick, I think we gotta go offensive line then. If we stuck to this, yes, but here's the problem. Look at Jerzan Newton sitting there, dude. Yeah. That's, that's tough, tough, man. That is so well, tough. he'll be off the board if he if we don't take him. No doubt about it. So here's what you got to look at offensive line wise. Do one of these guys fall pretty far, right? So if we look at it overall, again, just real quick, interior offensive line, Powers Johnson at 32, he's probably going to be gone at 41. Right. And he is right. hands down right. our best offensive line, right? Um, Christian Haynes is going to be around for a little bit. He'll probably be there all the way up through 50, 58, right? He's our mm -hmm. second best one. And then BB was a little higher. He'll be gone. I don't. I don't see a scenario where BB's going to make sense. And then of course Fuaga is. Uh, where's Fuaga at? We may be down too far. Fuaga, Fuaga, Fuaga. He's a tackle, right? What the heck's going? On? What the hell's going on? <laughs> Let's see here. Fuaga, Fuaga. Why am I not seeing? Oh, he must already got picked. Duh. That makes wow. sense. Right? Yeah. So Fuaga's already off the board. Okay. So just keep that in mind. So with that being said, Tim, I really, man, I feel good. I feel good about taking Jerzan Newton here, man. What do you think? Hey, you, I'm never going to argue uh, when it comes to taking defensive guys. So yeah. I'm I'm with it. it. It's either him or Powers Johnson. And again, if we didn't have Christian Haynes in our back pocket, you know what I mean? Christian Haynes uh, down here and Connor Beebe, really Christian Haynes is the, the ace in the hole. So I kind of feel like, I would regret passing up on that defensive lineman. Let's just do it. Let's pull the trigger. Let's go defensive lineman Jerzon Newton out of Illinois. All right, let's see what happens here now as we move forward. We already took him. So, all right, here we are sitting at pick 41. Let's see who's the best. Look who's still there, Tim. Powers Johnson, bro. Now, here's the question, though. Do we not take the safety here and worry about losing them, right? Because they are not. Yeah. Yeah. They're not well, going to be there. Who are we going to take, though? Are we taking Kenshin's or Newbin? It, for me, it, it's it. I mean, Newbin's Newbin's number one on our board, man. Checked all the boxes all the way across the board. And you don't think he'll be there at fifty-eight? There's a chance. There's a chance. There's there's a better chance of him being there than Cam Kenshin's because this is operating off of their board here with Cam Kenshin's being four, being eight spots higher on the vertical board. So, uh, I. My vote, man, and we can we can kind of hash it out here. My vote would be Power Powers Johnson here, man. Like he is hands down our best offensive lineman of everybody yeah. we traded Chat, out. The chat's with you too. Are they okay? Yeah, keep an yeah. eye on that for me for sure. All right, so let's go Powers Johnson. All right. All right, here we go. Good value, both picks, A's, loving it. All right, let's see what else we got here. All right, so here we are at pick 58. Look who's there. Both of them. Wow. Hey. 
this couldn't have worked out no better. We're only going to get one for sure now. So yeah. let's, let's just yeah. take your boy Newbin. Well, you want to see what the chat – what does the chat think? Newbin or Kinchins? Here we go again. <laughs> but, again, I'm going to veto it because we just did the exercise and Newbin was the guy. You know what I mean? Like we've got to trust the board. The yeah. real question needs to be – we already took offensive linemen. It's going to come down to linebacker and safety. That's the real question. So we see these safeties are not going to be here later. I, I already know the answer to this. These guys are going to be here later. Like, uh, you know, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. will probably be gone, but we got Junior Colson as our second-best linebacker. He'll be there uh, most likely at eighty at 88. I would imagine if he's not there, then we can get um, – yeah, we'll have to take one of these other guys. That's really what it comes down to, Tim, is do we want safety or linebacker? It's got to be safe. we got to go safety. Yeah, take Tyler Newman. Is that what they're saying? Yeah, let's draft Tyler Newman. Is that what they're saying, Tim? I need to know. Yeah, I've, I've been flashing them on the screen here. All Carly right. Ray, uh, Broad Love in here. We've got Uncle Eric Sutherland says. Everybody's signing off, huh? Newman. Peter Stone says Newman. I need to know if Eric Sutherland's sober or not. If he's sober, we're making this pick, all right? <laughs> I'm not going to wait on the answer. Let's go, Newbin. Here we go. Another A. I'm loving this draft, dude. Holy cow. This is awesome. All right, let's see here. Next pick coming up. And, of course, we're going to get out of the, what we talked about tonight. Um, so, it'll be – we'll just kind of go rapid fire after that. So, uh, you remember Kalen Bullock was the third highest graded safety when it came to uh, – PFF, he's still there. Look who's on the board. Holy cow. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Bro, at 88? At 88? Let's go. Yeah, you got to take him. Got to. Unless man. we double dip safeties when you take Bullock. <laughs> Tim, dude, I we didn't – you and I did not run through this offline, did we? We didn't do a no. couple weeks ago. How's this going to fall? We You didn't even know what the hell we were talking about tonight, did you, before we got on no, uh, Not until about uh, five minutes before we jumped on. <laughs> so you – know. With that being said, dude, we, we're taking Jeremiah Trotter Jr., and we just got all three of our number one players on these mini, mini uh, draft boards that we created. And look at the A's across the board, bro. Oh, I love this draft, dude. Holy cow. All right. We need help from the uh, the chat the rest of the way out here. I'm uh, Brian Gutekunst in the chat says, good job, guys. Keep up the good work. I'm taking notes. Thanks, Goody. Appreciate <laughs> you. Goody in the house. I love it. Dude. And of course, that. Uncle Eric says this mock is rigged. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got to get a shirt made that just says ri hashtag rigged on it. PTA hashtag rigged. <laughs> Send that over to our boy. Um, we'll get it to you in in in, in time for the uh, the upcoming election too. There, Eric. By the way, so all right, Tim. What are we doing here, man? I'd like to get the chat's take. Um, Kalen Bullock, safety, edge defender Jonah Ellis. Uh, we got running back Trey Benson, defensive lineman Mason Smith, uh, interior offensive lineman Zach Zinter, running back Jonathan Brooks. Keep in mind, you got the ACL there. Wide receiver Roman Wilson, cornerback DJ James. Linebacker, is that Junior Colson? Holy uh, yep. Bro. Chat wants running back. Really? Seeing Benson here in the chat. I think that's a good pick, man. What about corners? Any corners? Yeah, I was just looking at that. We have one corner at DJ James. Let's pull up the corners and see if there's anybody here we absolutely love. Um, you got DJ James out of Auburn. You got cornerback Mike Sainrish still out of Michigan. Uh, cornerback Cam Hart out of Notre Dame. Johnny Dixon out of Penn State. Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon. Again, we didn't do the exercise for the corners. I wish we had because that would have made this really, really cool. And Tim, you keep an eye on the time. Yeah, we got to wrap this thing up. You had to get off here, didn't you? Let's uh, let's, let's go quick here. Let's go quick. So, what do you think the chat is saying here? Uh, Carly Ray is being sarcastic. She said, "Kicker." <laughs> Damn it, Carly. <laughs> but um, me. no. Uh, the chat looks like, uh, man, Bullet <laughs> Benson. Oh my goodness! All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna halfback, go back. Halfback is the popular. Seems to be popular here. All right, let's go trade Benson. Let's get our back right now. All right. Bang. My pick probably would have been Junior Colson, but let's just go with Trey Benson. A plus. Look, of course, you guys got an A plus. That's the way it works. All right. We're going to go rapid fire the rest of the way out, Tim. I'll just get kind of get your take. 
and we'll we'll wrap this puppy up here. Let's see here. Up next, we got interior offensive line mahogany, defensive lineman Tyler Davis, Spencer Rattler at quarterback, Cam Hart at corner, running back Irving. Um, anybody, anybody, anybody? Okay, so Junior Colson is now gone. Um, there's no more offensive linemen. So I, I, I'm going to kind of look at best available and what we kind of need, right? To me, it would be between Mahogany, interior offensive line, uh, BC guy, or uh, Cam Hart, Notre Dame cornerback, because we do need a little bit of depth there at corner, I feel like, too. Which of those two would you rather have, Tim? I'm going to go with, with dead fish here, Hart. Hart? Okay. Yeah, we need a corner. Boom, A-plus, love it. Crushed it. All right, let's see what else we got here as we're rolling through. We're in, what, round five now? About to be six. All right, so here we are at round five. This is going to be pick 167. Let's go rapid fire. We got running back Dylan Lobb. We got uh, tied in uh, Ben Sanat. We kind of need a backup tied in. Punter, Tory Taylor. Offensive tackle, Javen Foster. Offensive tackle, Rosengarten. Quarterback, Jordan Travis. Linebacker, Jalen Floyd. You know, for me right here, Tim, this might be a good spot. It's either going to be Ben Sanat or it's going to be uh, offensive Foster. tackle. Yeah. yeah. I'm kind of leaning toward Foster. Me too. I was leaning towards O line. Let's go Foster. A plus. Good pick. Great value there. All right. Next pick going into round six. Let's see what we got best available. All right. We got running back Jalen Wright, wide receiver Javon uh, Baker or Javon Baker, however you say it. We got defensive line Keith Randolph Jr., offensive tackle Andrew Coker, quarterback. Joe Milton, he couldn't hit a bull in the ass with a mop. I'm just being honest. I've watched a lot of Tennessee ball. <laughs> Not a good pick there. Uh, linebacker Curtis Jacobs. Sorry, kids out there for the language. I apologize. Running back Cody Schrader. Running back Frank Gore Jr. Edge defender Cedric Johnson. So let's go back to the top of the list. Running back, wide receiver, defensive line, offensive tackle. We took offensive tackle last time. Um, I think right here, Tim, I'm feeling good. Think about running back. What if A.J. Dillon isn't back? Right. If he isn't back, then you got Aaron Jones. We took a running back earlier, right? And Trey Benson. Should we go running back again or should we go defensive line or offensive tackle? De- depends on how much you like Emmanuel Wilson. And I like I like Emmanuel Wilson. I do too, man. You're right. So, so I, 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 now we're down to defensive line or offensive tackle. Yeah. Um and, we you know, my, gut, defensive line, didn't my gut tells me defense first because I'm a defensive guy, but that old line, man, I don't think having another tackle is going to hurt us. Yeah, I don't see us keeping Yash this year. I really don't, man. You know, and we uh, talked about three offensive linemen that would put us at three. Let's do it. All right, we went Andrew Coker, B+. Okay. All right, we're now into second pick of round six. Got a couple guys to choose from here. See, now I feel good about a running back, you know. Mm, At 215, Frank Gore Jr., you want another if you want another running back that you know he may still be on the board at what do we pick after that? You're right, man. Running backs typically drop. We're at two fifty yeah. or we're at two might be there at two forty two. So do and, we look and, at uh edge or I'm kind of thinking edge because we talked about it, right? You know, uh, our boy Kingsley and Igbari is not gonna be ready week one. Probably gonna be, you know, way later in the year before he's available. I say we go Cedric Johnson here at Edge. Yep. All right, there we go. A plus. Nice. We're almost on your 10. If you need to go, you just go, buddy. I don't want to hold you up, man. You do your thing. Um, just let me know when you do so. I'm not talking to myself. So I'll ask. <laughs> I, got, I got you. Um, all right. So two more picks here. Pick 242. We got Edge, uh, Jalex Hunt. We've got wide receiver Jordan Whittington, wide receiver Jaquan Jackson, cornerback Dwight McLaughlin. Um, you've got linebacker J.D. Bertram from Notre Dame. For me right here, did we take a – we took a corner earlier, right? What about another safety? Are there any other safeties? Yeah, we, we've, only taken, we've only taken one safety, haven't we? Yeah, we wanted four. It, you know, here's <laughs> I don't the know thing. if we wanted four in the draft, but certainly right, right. two or three in the draft and maybe a, a free agent or something. We would have to reach really far to find the nearest safety. I mean, they're way down, way, way right. down, like 238, which yeah. – I mean, I guess it's kind of the ballpark. We also needed four corners, and we've only drafted one. So we could go corner, seeing that that's kind of best available here, right? Yeah. So, um, let's go with Dwight McLaughlin. Dwight McLaughlin, yep. All right. Bang, B+. Plus. B+. And then the final pick for the Packers draft here in 2024, you got linebacker J.D. Bertrand. you got cornerback Hardy, 
Now let's see if it makes a little more sense. There's no safety on the board now. Might, might just go another corner here. I don't think we need another linebacker unless, of course, we knew that uh, Devondre Campbell was not going to be on the roster, right? So yeah. um, we already got our edge, right? Yeah, so we're good there. Yeah, I'd say take another corner. Or take yeah, take another corner. He'd probably be best available. It's either either that or cut Devondre and take JD Bertrand. But I feel better about da- Daquan uh, Hardy. Yeah, Daquan Hardy, cornerback out of Penn State. That good with you? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Boom. All right, there you go, guys. Not a bad little draft, man. I, I like the way that went, dude. So if we hit save here, I think it'll give me a fuller screen here. Let me back up a little bit. Back out, back out. We're going to screen grab this. I like that draft a lot, man. That I feel like we were best prepared doing that draft there, Tim. Like, that's the most prepared we went in with needs and and kind of, all right, we focused mm-hmm. on both PFF, passer rating when targeted, all those things, blown block percentage, all that. So we went Jerzan Newton, Jackson Powers Johnson, Tyler Newbin, Jeremiah Trotter Jr., Trey Benson, Cam Hart, uh, Javon Foster, Andrew Coker, Cedric Johnson, Dwight McLaughlin, and Daquan Hardy, cornerback out of Penn State. Man, that was a lot of fun, dude. I'm glad we got to do that. So uh, I will save that and make sure we've got it, and we, we might bring it up in the morning. And uh, <laughs> Greg Roth says our, our long snapper sucks. All right, cool. All right, maybe we should have drafted a long snapper. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what he's talking about. But, uh, yeah, so uh, – 25th pick in the draft, the Packers select. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, oh, man. Let me, uh, Tim, if you need to go, go ahead. I promised him I would look up Cedric Gray real quick. He just asked again. So, Let's do uh, it. Yeah, I'm going to do it real quick here. Pull it up. We got time. Uh, By the way, the chat's not happy that we didn't take Frank Gore Jr., but that's okay. Oh, are they really? Dude, I, 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 just, all, looked, I just looked and saw all the – everyone said, <laughs> Gore, Gore, Gore. Yeah. <laughs> the live viewers just started dropping. Us, right? <laughs> like, I'm done with these jokers. Are you kidding? I love Frank Gore Jr. too, man. I think he's going to be a good back. Um, yeah, let's see here. Who did we say? We said linebacker, right? And we were looking for Cedric. What was his name, Tim? Cedric Gray. Gray. G-R-A-Y. Right, Cedric Gray. Let's go down. Um, 152 is where they've got him at, okay? 152. To put that into perspective. Um, where did we take Benson? We took – let's see. I don't know where we took Benson at. Let me see if I can pull it back up real quick. Benson, Benson, Benson. Running, You're talking about running back Trey Benson? We took him yep. at 91. 91, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's where we took him at. So, but yeah, so whoever was asking about Cedric Gray, um, they've got him ranked 152. That was just after JD Bertrand. Of course, Cedric Gray is out of North Carolina, 6'2, 235. His PFF grades 56.1, jumps all the way up to 82.2, and then drop back down to 74.2. That 82.2 is promising, kind of like, all right, hold up a minute. Now, he was a senior, so he's a little bit older, but nonetheless, young enough, you know, that you could. You could probably still take him there, but uh, there you go. All right. <laughs> Greg Grass says, AFAM asks his dates if they're a long snapper. <laughs> All right. Well, that being said, we're out of here. Oh, my goodness. We, we've hit that moment. Tim, thanks for going long, buddy. I know I said we'd be out of here in 45 minutes. I lied to you again. You'd think you'd stop trusting me. But, guys, we're out of here. We'll see you in the morning for Good Morning Lambo. Appreciate everybody. Uh, spending the evening with us. This was a fun little exercise, just gathering as much information as we can to put into our PTA horizontal draft board. That way we're ready when draft night comes and we do our live draft streaming. So really excited about that. But with that being said, for those of you listening on the pod, thank you for making us a part of your day. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world and go Pack Go. The power sweep. Actually, it's the, it's the lead play in our, in our offense. Yes, a YN or a tight end to open up somewhere between six feet and nine feet to get an isolation with the with the linebacker. You tell the tackle to take the defensive end if he's over him. If he's not, to drive down on the first man to his inside. If the YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker in, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here and a seal here. Try to run this place in the alley.